Hello there everyone, welcome back to Cosplay Cartographer. We're at episode 3 now, and although I already did film in episode 3, I had to scrap it due to everything falling apart. Quite literally and metaphorically. Episode 3 was supposed to be about e-steps, calibrating all that, getting everything set up in Cura, and just kind of learning how I go about all that and showing you my journey to figure all this out. However, once I did figure it out, another problem came up. And then I'd fix that problem and another problem came up and it was just like defeating a hydra of problems where you defeat one problem you fix it and three more show up and just show their pretty little face so I've had a lot of issues between then and now and I just want to do this quick story time and update and give you all this feedback that I've learned over the past few weeks so let's jump in Cosplay cartographer where we're just figuring out cosplay. I have a Halo cosplay that my bud Pip Ninja Armory linked to him down in the description made for me, but I really wanted to make something of my own. So that's what this series is about and me figuring out how 3D printing works, which it never does. So I learned that lesson real quick right off the bat. But as you can see, my 3D printer is operational. I'm not going to say good because we don't say that anymore. It's operational for now. I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. So I'm not, I'm not saying good anymore or working. We're just going to say operational operational. So after I did calibrate my e-steps, the first issue I did come across was the bed not being level. I had a lot of bed adhesion issues. To give you an example, I did a test print on the Rengoku hilt from Demon Slayer. <laughs> But uh, basically, the bottom layer just kept getting ripped off, wouldn't stick to the table, and it created a big old mess and kind of melted in here. There's no clear grid pattern like there should be. Obviously, you know, worked out for this print. I mean, you can see the top layer is pretty decent, but, you know, not every print is the same. So it just created more issues down the line. I wanted to nip it in the butt while I could. So to fix the bed adhesion error, I basically learned that this cord right here didn't have enough slack. There's actually a little bracket on this side of the z-axis that keeps that cord from rubbing up against the little spiral towers. You can see it right there, but there's one on the other side. So when the x-axis would slide all the way that way, it was pulling the head, and so when it would do an auto-leveling calibration, it wasn't properly auto-leveling, even though it would continue with the whole process, which threw the whole bed out of whack. So I went ahead and fixed that, fixed my z-offset, manual leveling, learned how to properly level with the paper, and voila, everything was fixed. Oh my god, something just flew in my eye. So yeah. Leveling, great now. Once the leveling was completed and I was ready to finish making that cosplay cartographer episode three video, the precursor to this one, I had issues with literally everything. So I had to call my friend Pip Ninja Armory. Hey, can you help me fix this? Hey, you're stupid. Okay. So it just a lot of fun back and forth. Huge shout out to Pip Ninja Armory for helping me with all these issues. And there's, there's going to be a lot more phone calls, bud. A lot more. So, did another test print. We 3D printed the Geo no Subasa, the Wings of Freedom from Attack on Titan, and it came out perfect. Perfect. Just like the anime. So basically, all he helped me do was just calibrate some settings, tweak support settings, those kind of things, and that's basically how I got everything to work out. So then I started doing cosplay cartographer episode three again. So after I figured out everything and I wanted to continue working on episode three once again, I was streaming while 3D printing this, a Jujutsu Kaisen Sukuna finger, which is scaled up. I didn't manually scale it up. It just came like this and it was printing back here, obviously. And to those who don't watch anime, this does not look like a finger, especially if it's turned like this, which it was. So that was awkward. And I did choose to scrap it because the supports ripped off the bottom parts of the finger. So wanted to show that to you all. Just make sure your supports are properly calibrated and have the right settings. Because if you make your supports too strong, this will happen. <laughs> Once I figured that out and my supports were nailed down, I attempted to 3D print the Prison Realm from Jujutsu Kaisen, also not one-to-one. -one. It should be a little bit bigger than this. Issue with this, if you see these little lines right here, basically there's little thicker layers that happened as it went up. I was having power outage issues. Yay! So up here in my loft, considering I have a lot of things for YouTube, uh, YouTubing and editing, 3D printing. I have a mini fridge back there. It just kept losing power. There wasn't enough in the circuit up here to keep the 3D printer powered on. So I tried a lot of different things, unplugged everything, but what I learned was the culprit was my Xbox mini fridge. And it draws a lot of power, obviously. So I went ahead and just unplugged it and I'm only gonna be using it for special occasions. So the fridge plugged into the same circuit as a 3D printer, not a good idea. It'll shut the power and make these marks in your print. <laughs> Another thing wrong with this print is that the Z axis or the Z offset was too close to the table, causing me not to be able to rip off my bottom layer. And it also scratched the top layer 
you can kind of see the scratch right where my index finger is right here. All these things just kept accumulating and it made me extremely discouraged. I couldn't get a print just right. And I'm not saying it had to be perfect, but I wanted it to just be good enough. No issues, no apparent disformities. I just couldn't get there. So I didn't feel confident making a cosplay cartographer episode three. So I tweaked some more settings, changed my Z offset and attempted to print a Halo Infinite Rockstar holder. If you see behind me, I do have all five cans for Halo Infinite's collection thing they had going on and printed this. Sorry, attempted to print this. What the fuck is this piece of shit? My baby was victim to a homicidal 3D printer. The weapon, layer shift. So I just wanna explain how this layer shift occurred. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I have no idea why this happens, but it did and it's never happened again on any of my other prints. So I woke up one morning and there it was. So that, that extremely discouraged me. I took a break from 3D printing and that was that for about a week. After doing some more research and kicking myself in the butt, I really wanted to attempt a print that was pretty useful to me that was not going to take three days to print. So I have my headphones. I just sit on my desk and I wanted to make a little stand for them. So I went ahead and 3D printed a stand. So the original one I 3D printed has been thrown away because what had happened, even though it came out amazing, uh, you can kind of see it came out really smooth and the bolt, which I did also 3D print, it was two separate files, obviously. Everything came out great, it can screw very nicely. What did he say? I accidentally, well not accidentally, I didn't really know it was an issue, printed it horizontally. So as the weight of the headphones are being placed, like, you know, it's obviously going to pull down. If your print lines are going, you know, this way, it's pulling Now the real question I think some of you might be wondering is what the hell am I printing behind me? So I'm actually printing my very first test cosplay piece. So I used to be a huge fan of Destiny, I still am, I just haven't gotten into it. So I'm printing a sunspot for my brother. These are the parts that I have completed so far. I have this, this, the trigger, and in a thingy. So I have, I have four separate thingies that are gonna make a big complete thingy. And how I'm gonna do that, I don't know, but we're gonna figure it out. So I do wanna mention that going forward, I want my cosplay cartographer videos to be strictly progress based and not issue based. Like I'm at a standstill as to where I'm at. So I'm gonna take time to make YouTube shorts and basically talk about this is the issue I had. This is how I fixed it. This is how I did my E-step and just do like little 0.5 chapters, like a 2.5, 3.5 episode. And that way I can explain really briefly. I don't need to take 10 minutes to show you how to do E-steps or something or how I figured it out and just throw those in between episodes. I think it's a much better way going forward. It's gonna save a lot of time for myself and for you as the viewer and just to see how my cosplay comes along. So yeah, just a very informal cosplay cartographer episode. Really excited to see how this cosplay piece turns out prop piece turns out I should say and I'm excited to do this with you all especially since it's back up and running my next short will be talking about e-steps and I would also like to give a huge shout out to Pip Ninja Armory's father Ken Doherty who actually won first place at HCS for his amazing George cosplay who helped me install a lot of pieces here so those pieces I will talk about in another YouTube short I won't take up any more of your time thank you all so much for watching episode three of cosplay cartographer and I'll catch you all in the next one subscribe to Zang Helios for some more unbreakable believable content.